Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. At Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. God's will is wild. We'll be right back with our guest, Mike Roth of the Order of Lepanto. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have a martial artist with us today, uh, Mike Roth, who is, has the sword, sword martial arts uh, ministry with the Order of Lopanto. You know, uh, I'm trained as a second degree ninja black belt, and I've trained in probably a dozen different types of martial arts, as have my children. And the greatest value I have experienced through the martial arts training is, is, the, is the internal work that's done. Uh, God loves our human body. And so much, so often the, the virtues that he wants to instill m within us are worked from the outside in and then also from the inside out. And, you know, I'm thinking about, and one of, and one of the things I love to do as a, in, in my ninja training is knife fight. We learned to sword fight a little bit, but I love to knife fight. Uh, and I think about uh, the knife fight because the knife is, when you're in a knife fight, you know where your opponent's attack is going to come from. If you're, if you're unarmed and coming out with, with a knife, the good news is he's probably not going to kick you, probably not going to hit you. He's probably not going to use his left hand. He's going to use the right hand where the knife is. And so you kind of know where the, where the enemy's attack is coming from. And if you're a good martial artist, you don't respond to an attack. You actually stage the attack. For example, in a knife fight, I might open my neck up to the opponent. By the way, I'm holding my arms. I might expose my, my neck or my stomach. Um, to kind of invite an attack to a certain place, so to some degree, I kind of might know where he's going to where he's going to thrust, and and then what I what I love to do in my ninja training, it's kind of funny, is you use your opponent's energy and your opponent's en uh, weapon against him when a, when an attack comes. Uh, certain ways that you use their energy when a thrust comes and it's a and it's a committed thrust you can instead of dodging it you can uh and trying to block it you can pull that weapon towards you and use it uh, actually as a way to um to mortally wound your opponent and uh and so when jesus was on the cross this is what he did he staged the fight his opponent was satan and satan's knife was death and when, when Satan attacked him, Jesus used his weapon of death to defeat him. So when the knife attack came, Jesus used that thrust of the enemy. When the enemy with glee thought that he had destroyed uh, and, and, and killed the Son of God, and the demons all shouted with glee, no, that's fa the farthest from the truth. Jesus took that weapon of death, and he, and he destroyed death using that weapon. He took captivity capture. Uh, and Jesus staged that fight, and he used the enemy and defeated him using his own weapon. There's no more, no, nothing more humiliating than someone being beaten in a fight by the, by the person they're, they're, they're trying to abuse or attack using their own weapon against them. That's what Jesus did. That's our victory in Jesus Christ. We have with us today Mike Lepanto, Mike uh, Roth, who's the uh, founder of the Order of Lepanto, which is a martial arts uh, practice based on the, the ancient uh, Crusades. Mike Roth, aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Oh, it's great to be here. Hey, Mike, where are you right now? Where, where, do, where do you live? I live in North Texas, just outside of Dallas. I've heard of Texas. Yeah, <laughs> nice and hot this time of year. What's going on with the Big 12 this year, dude? It's all falling apart. Yeah, well, you know, some years you get it and some years you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oklahoma and UT are are, are fleeing. The, the, you know what? Texas ought to kick the kick Texas University of Texas out of Texas if they're going to leave the Big Twelve. That's what I think. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's so good to have you on the show. We just want to give a paint a big picture here for a moment. What is sure. the Battle of Lepanto? Remind people what that was all about. Sure. So uh, it occurred in October of 1571, and it was a, a battle between the uh, navies of of Christian Europe who banded together to oppose the Ottoman Turks uh, and they were outnumbered in ships about three to one um, and they met in battle 
but the night before the battle is what was important. The the, the the head of the Christian fleet had all of his men get out and pray the rosary the night before because he knew that the next morning they were going to be fighting. And then he instructed all of his men to take their rosaries and carry them with each man into battle. And it became this uh, it became this overwhelming victory. The winds died down at the exact right spot, and the the Christian fleet was able to to outflank the the Turkish fleet, and destroy the naval powers of uh, of the uh, Ottoman Empire. For it, it was it, an amazing victory, uh, the likes of which were not really seen again until World War One. It was a, it, it was it was basically the Muslims are trying to take over we the Western world, and it was a it was a pivotal battle. And as I recall, the Pope had a had a revelation from God about that battle while it was going on. What was that about? Yes. So near the end of the battle, when it was clear that the that the that, that the Christian fleet was going to win, the the Pope uh, was in prayer, and he stopped, and he went to the window, and he opened his window, he looked out, and he turned back to the people who were with him, and said that we've won so there he had a revelation at that minute uh, even that, though he was you know, hundreds hundreds went. maybe a thousand miles away from the battle the lord the lord yes. told him that the battle had been won you know when it's interesting that he that the rosary because for myself um i don't have it have it hanging there right now but normally in my house i'll have my black belt hanging at the entryway and then my rosary over that black belt because i want yes. any intruder to know that when he comes into my house he's not going to find a victim and the two greatest weapons i have you know are are my martial skills, plus the rosary yes. is the most powerful weapon that I have. When I want to go into intercessory prayer, I used to struggle with that so much. But now when I know there's something I need to be praying for and I need to go into battle for, I bring, I bring my weapon, I bring the rosary. It's the most powerful weapon I've ever yielded in terms of intercessory prayer. Right. Now, you know, many people think today of the rosary or as prayer as more of a passive activity, but it's not. It's a martial activity. It and, can, and can be it both. It is truly combative. Tell us a little bit about your own personal journey before we get into your uh, your Order of Lepanto that you've been developing. Oh sure, you know uh, I was born and I was born Catholic, uh, and my parents floated away from the faith, and so I did not was was not able to be raised Catholic. Um, and I was invited back to the church in my early twenties by a friend of mine, uh, and I walked in and I was overwhelmed by this feeling of belonging. Um, and so I, I knew then that I had to sign up for RCIA, and I had to get back into what, the What church. is RCIA? That's the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, and it's a way for adult converts, uh, or in my case, adult partial, par who are partially raised in the faith, to finish their education and to gain an adult understanding of the church. They say there's two really scary things, a convert, a Catholic convert, and a Catholic revert. <laughs> they're, the most, exactly. they're the most zealous <laughs> among all Catholics, and I agree. I was a revert myself. You know, I drifted from the church. I actually say the church drifted from me because although I really wanted to grow in Christ, there was no one there to show me the, show me the way. Uh, I, I know yes. it seems silly, but I just didn't have anybody handing off the faith to me, and so I went into non-denominational land, and then in time, Thankfully, I began to find the early church fathers and and understood the, the, the powerful presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. And it became like I got no choice. If the primitive church worshiped this way, believed this way, and lived this way, then I need to become, I need to return to the church. So what happened uh, through your RCIA? Uh, you know, I, I got a chance to really study, and, and I attacked reading like, you wouldn't believe, you know, uh, reading the, uh, the the church fathers and uh, reading through the entire catechism and reading the Bible from cover to cover. And I just, I really tried to, I really soaked it in because if I was going to make this commitment to change my life, then I wanted to go in with my eyes wide open. I needed to know everything about it. And, and so I, I, I see studied the and... I see the library behind you. You know, I, I too, yes. like all, all these books behind me are the either the early church fathers or there's a commentary um the commentary by the church fathers but one of my proudest possessions is right up here and it's uh all three volumes of the far side uh, uh cartoon series <laughs> oh there you go i love it <laughs> <laughs> so they go hey you got to have a little bit of both right but what book are you reading right now by the way what's 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 the book that you're studying right now Actually, I just uh, finished do a rereading Joseph Peeper's uh, 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 a book on um, leisure, and I'm oh, in yeah. between because we're we're kicking off our homeschool year, so I'm a middle in the middle of re 
reading stuff to make sure that our homeschool year gets set off in the right direction. Do you remember the title of that book? Uh, Leisure, the Basis of Culture. Yeah, I've, I've read that book. It's a great book. This is, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Mike Roth. He's the founder of a martial uh, skill uh, organization in the house. I would describe that called the Order of Lepanto. And, and, and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about how, uh, what the, the skills of a war, the attributes of a warrior are, warrior are when we get back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Spitting and whittling. A lot back in the 1950s, I would sit with my kin working their rocking chairs on the back porch of the old Markham home. It was a two story affair, having a large dining room where the grandfather clock chimed in dinner and other affairs. It was built back in the 1870s after my great uncles, grandpappy, and great grandpappy came across the Oregon Trail to strike it rich in the booming and sometimes bust salmon fishing industry. The old place was blown off its foundation during the Columbus Day storm of 1962. Hooey, that was one serious southwester with gusts of over 100 miles per hour and sustained winds of 80 to 90 miles per hour. Well, I digress, but digressing is a fine place to go now and then. Anywho, great uncle Hiram and Joseph would sit on the back porch of the old place spitting and whittling tobacco juice that is, telling their stories after Sunday church dinner. And that's when most of the spitting and whittling was done. It was a for sure event to happen every week. Having a good stick or a piece of driftwood and carving knife was required. Time passed as stories got told. Jesus was a master storyteller. What them parables are all about, spiritual truth wrapped in a story. I can picture Jesus with his twelve around a campfire or sitting in the shade of a green tree in Galilee, pointing out to the surrounding fields. Behold, the lilies of the field. Yep, finest stories in the world to be reading. If you haven't picked up the Bible lately, open up to the storybooks of the Bible, like Genesis, Exodus, Esther, and the Gospels and the Book of Acts. Some real interest in reading and storytelling at its best. This is Dan Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're doing something that's so exciting that we need to invite... uh, the men to we have we're developed we've developed an online school of manliness it's a three-year cycle and it includes being part of a the man cave which is our we think of it as the cave of Adullam, where men gather together it's it, we, we used to be on a secret facebook group now we have our own community type app like facebook on our website so that we're isolated from all of the contagion of facebook but we share and encourage and challenge and inspire each other through that through that secret group we call it a Facebook light, and and then you're you're as you join the group you are mentored in by someone uh, to to get you to be to become more involved, and then the school of manliness is a three year cycle of monthly lessons that includes video written content and uh, and a mentoring relationship with someone to walk you through and it's 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 exciting what I have the first year is based on the virtues and the next two years are based on the twenty four rules of manliness, which is a uh, kind of part uh, part one and part two of, of a new book that's coming out with Sophia Institute. So we, we actually lead you through in the most exciting ways, and then we give you a toolbox. I remember when I was uh, first starting this ministry, I had a vision, basically, of a man in a, in a black pickup truck, and he was driving his black pickup, pickup truck through uh, uh, a graveled area, and he was just spitting rocks because he had no weight, like no big heavy toolbox in the back of that, the bed of that truck. This is the toolbox that we're giving you. You have, you have um, 
uh, ability to do a, an assessment in each of these areas of your lives, set new trajectories, new goals, new measurable SMART goals, a way to give yourself feedback using metrics. You have the, the entire uh, catechism. You have the entire um, Bible uh, in that toolbox. And you have a bit ability to journal, too. So, uh, so many exciting things. We And it's all based on a cowboy theme, believe it or not. We have our, our cowboy priest... Uh, Father Bryce, a lot of his his thoughts are included in there. We have my friend Daniel Markham's uh, uh, Cowboy Up series in there, and then you have videos from me and written lessons. So, dudes, you got to join the school of manliness. It's time for men to get back to being men and to encourage and challenge each other. And one of the reasons why we have Mike Roth with us is because that's that's what his ministry is about. He's he's developed the the Order of Lepanto, which is uh, uh, an organization that helps you to, helps the men understand the martial skill. Of the Crusaders and uh, and and then learn how to how, learn how to use that to instill the the warrior att- attributes and to live li- the life of a warrior, um, not a warrior, right, Mike? A warrior. <laughs> That's right, not a warrior. What inspired you to 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 start the Order of Lepanto, and what is it all about? Okay, so I was uh, I belong to a secular sword fighting group that recreates the medieval and Renaissance sword fighting. And we were studying the manuals that were written. Uh, and one of the manuals is literally written by a priest for monks who are going out into the wilderness to create, a, to establish a monastery and how to defend themselves in the wild frontier of France. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. um, anywhere outside of a city in those days was, was wild. It was, definitely. And the the presenter in this group who was, was, to, was giving this, this talk to us said, that we cannot truly understand the uh, how these men thought about the martial art because we did not share their faith. And I'm like, I, I throw up my hands, but wait a second, have you ever heard of the Catholic Church? Right? We are the same and have the same core beliefs. You know, obviously, there's some there's some uh, things have evolved a little bit over time, but we have the same. It's the same magisterial teachings from back then to now. We believe the same thing. And this guy just couldn't believe that that was true. And at that same time, I had been praying about how to become more active in the new evangelization. How, instead of being a consumer, could I be a contributor? And how could I help this uh, this to evolve? And, and and this was, this came to me as an answer to a prayer. How do I do this? And, and it, one morning I woke up and I was like, oh, yeah, mm. I should be doing the Order of Lepanto. How, yeah, just like uh, the Lord just inspired you. It was, it, you know, and the Lord speaks to us in our visions, in, in our, dream, in our yes. dreams, it says. Uh, and and, and you, you woke up and you go, well, maybe that wasn't just the pizza I had last night. Maybe well, that was the Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit action exactly. plan. And so then what did you exactly. do? <laughs> So uh, I started with trying to figure out what I would do for a name. You know, why, why, did, why would this organization exist, right? And so to me, it is, I was looking at the fusion of martial activity or martial spirit and the faith. And so I looked to the Battle of Lepanto and I said, you know, mm. these men, they could not have done what they did if they hadn't been praying the rosary. Mm. But they also could not have done what they did if they weren't didn't show up ready to fight and trained to fight right and it took both in combination in order for the victory to be theirs uh, and that's exactly what we need today right for the victory to be ours individually and as a culture we need to to harness that spirit that fighting spirit and apply it to our faith every man wants to be a hero it's yes. okay to admit it we, we love to watch our great Westerns, which, by the way, our whole school of manliness is based on the whole cowboy Western theme. But and we love our heroes, and we want to be a hero. And you know why? Because that's the way God made us. But, yes. you know, it's so interesting how here in Hawaii we had a men's group get together, and we decided we're having a big regional, our first big regional men's event, which a friend of mine and I started, Ron Gokenauer and I put together. And he said, you know, a lot of men aren't going to come. The Filipino men are kind of macho, and they don't want to come. You know, I said, well, let, what, I was trained as an Eskrima teacher, the, the Filipino martial art of Eskrima, yes. which is stick fighting, empty-handed fighting, knife fighting. So I said, let's teach them how to do Eskrima. So the men came, and the first thing we do was have, ha, did was have them beat each other up. And they yep. loved it. They loved it. Um, but it was amazing how few men 
had any martial skill at all. And how important it is, it, it empowers you when the martial part, I mean, I know what you're doing is a spiritual thing, but it begins yes. from the outside in. So what happens when someone comes into your organization who's never, never developed any martial skill? Right, so we start them off at the very basics, right? And, and how do you move? How do you hold yourself? Where's your center of balance? Uh, and then we bring them up through uh, how to hold a sword, how to strike, how to how to kick, how uh, how to you know use all this stuff, how to be aware of your position in space and time, and how to move and get to where you want to be in the time you want to be there. Um, and it is yeah, about ahead. it's a no, it's about that fighting spirit and about that uh, about that control. And it's amazing how men. Um, will open up to their practice partners more than they will open up to anybody else once that trust is established. Well, that's true because, you know, in, in training in martial arts, we, uh, we uh, would say pain is good, injury is bad. So in yes. some of the training, you're actually inflicting pain, but you're being careful not to inflict injury. So when you give someone the permission, you can inflict pain. Don't cross that line where you injure me. But I know in order to actually learn this skill, I need to be wary. It, it, it helps if you do what you do with intent. But when you're in that relationship with the Lord, you experience that too, don't you? The great master. There's times when there's a certain sort of, there's that, that, that pain that comes from being a, a disciple of the Lord. But in that, yes. you learn to trust him and you get closer to him and you, you know. No, that is absolutely right. You know, it, the, each of these lessons, it's amazing how much overlap there is in this kind of, these kind of lessons between the martial arts and, and your faith. Tell me, we, we got one minute before we've got to take a break. Tell me one of those lessons that you've, you've learned. Uh, so one of the big lessons is that you pray with intention. You know, just like when you're striking your opponent, you strike with the intent to, to hit them or to inflict an injury to stop an attack, but you pray with intention. You don't just mumble the words and, and, and think that the words are going to do, do it by themselves. It's about your intent. What are you feeling? Channel your emotions and, and to really pray how you feel and what you want with, with true conviction and true feeling. You know, one of the first things I, I as a martial arts instructor too, and what, I, what I've learned is when I'm training someone, uh, they will want to be nice to me. And I'll say that you're not going to learn anything if you don't attack with intent, which means you're putting energy into it, but also emotional content into it. Um, we have to attack with intent. And, and the same thing is true, in our, like you said, in our prayer life. If all we're do doing is a religious form, like I know there's some martial arts uh, where there's a real emphasis on katas. You know, there's forms, there's patterns. Yes. And um, those are good. But you don't. But but it's when you when you're in a in a more of a sparring environment, when you're attacking with a tent that you really learn your skill. We were watching uh, a show the other night, my wife and I, about the Vikings, and there were there was a young king that they were trying to teach martial arts, and the guy that was training him was being nice to him, and the 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 father came out and said, hit him with hit him with that wooden sword, or he'll <laughs> never learn. Well, he's the king. Yes. Said, no, you you have to you have to go into battle, and so when you experience hardship in our lives embrace it and ask lord teach me teach me to be a warrior we're talking with mike lepanto the the founder of the order of lepanto it's a martial skill uh, organization but also uh, those who want to go deeper with the lord and be warriors for the lord we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure deep adventure ministries is grateful to notre dame federal credit union for underwriting the bear wasnick adventure on ewtn Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. 
Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking right now to the mama bears out there, those fierce, protective, not always soft and cuddly women out there that really care about their family and especially the men in their family. In their family. They're the St. Monica's of the world, praying for their families, praying for their, the men in their lives. And so we've opened up the door for you because there's so many of you that love our ministry called the Mama Bears. Go to deepadventure.com, click on it, you'll find out more. We have a secret uh, community-type platform, a Facebook-type platform for you could, with, where you could be with other women that are like-minded. And uh, it's called the Mama Bears Mug Club, actually, because you get a coffee mug, too, from us. And there's so many other things. You'll get the daily catechism from us. You'll get the, the uh, from me. And then you get Shondi Burks, uh, who moderates the group, her daily uh, mass readings and inspirations and so much more so uh mama bears go to deepadventure.com and join uh the mama bears mug club our guest today is mike lapanto and mike lapanto that's what i call you the rest of the interview mike <laughs> roth who is the founder of the order of lapanto in, in two in two sentences what would what would you say is the order of lapanto it is a way for men to engage in a masculine activity that helps you build friendships protect your family, and deepen your faith all deep at the Deepen your time. faith. What are the attributes of a warrior? Decisiveness, courage, um, judgment, I think are, are the ones I pick up, um, strength, um, and agility, you know, the ability to move correctly. You know, the thing about decisiveness Here's how you become decis decisive. Well, tell me, tell me what. Well, I would just say this: if you know your faith and decisiveness, you know, Augustine said there's three steps to decision making. There's number one: the intellect pursues, discovers, understands, and decides this is probably the best course of action. Then your will says, "Yes, I agree. Let's do that." And then there's action. Right there's those three steps of a de of decisiveness, and and in a warrior it can all take place in a split second, and how is that? Because the warrior is always already trained, his conscience is formed, his faith is formed. He understands the, his 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 faith, his catechism, his his the way he lives, his morals, and and the doctrines, so that in the in the in the element of the virtue of prudence, you choose that you look for the true good in every situation, you act on the true good, which is an act of love, and you do that through self donation. And you can do that in a split second if exactly. you're a warrior and you know what you stand for. Right. You know, I mean I like to tell people that martial arts is like playing chess at sixty miles an hour. It's fun, right. isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, go ahead. Just develop what you no, mean no, by that. That's, yeah, no, because you, you have to have strategy, and you have to have tactics, and you have to decide what you're going to do out of all the hundreds of things you might have learned, and then you have to actually do it all in that split second in order for, for it to work correctly for you. And apply that to our daily lives. Right. So now when you, when you run into a situation and you are tempted in some way, you can immediately you identify the, the, the temptation or the, the, call of the, the call of the devil. You immediately know that you shouldn't be doing this because of your training and your knowledge, and then you immediately turn away. You take that action to separate yourself from whatever it is that is tempting you. Okay, give us another example. You see a situation uh, going on, uh, someone, who's, someone who's vulnerable in some way. Yes. How do you step in between danger and someone who's – how do you move in, in a position to protect someone? Obviously, there's a little bit of care to, to be taken in some of that, but a lot of it is just kind of start. You notice something, and you go and place yourself into a position where you could get in between somebody if you needed to. You don't necessarily have to insert yourself in every situation. You know, uh, all it takes is being present in that moment and knowing, looking like you know what you're going to do next. For somebody who has bad intentions to recognize that too because – Criminals are generally looking for easy targets, and if they see something off on their side, that kind of raises their antenna and says, this person is not easy, is not a pushover, they back off. And it, it doesn't take an actual physical confrontation many times in order to protect somebody. 
And you're not inviting being a victim either. I mean, like, right. uh, and, and even in, with you walking with your family, whatever, the way you hold your head, the, your situational awareness, you're not walking close to bushes or vans and, and closed situations. Um, you know, like I, I went out, I, I go out to eat every now and then with Doug Berry when we have a chance to be together. It's so funny how we both go to the same chair in the restaurant. We know where the best <laughs> de- defensive position is. But now when we're together, we're comfortable. I'm comfortable with Doug taking the position or, or, or vice versa because we know we have each other's back, right? But yes. how do you apply that then to uh, this, this not, not looking like a victim and in, in situational awareness to uh, your, your spiritual life or your life as a father or th- things like that? Right, right. But you're always – and it's kind of the same thing, though. You're always looking out. You're always your, – your ears are always tuned. My children uh, – so I have a, a 13-year-old and a 12-year-old. Um, but I preview – my wife and I preview every show before they watch. We do not just blindly watch television. Because you can't. You, you can't invite that into your house because you don't want to be the victim who's looking around unaware as to what popped onto that television screen. You know, you know, it's true. You know, uh, it used to be Father's Knows Best was a very popular show <laughs> or Gunsmoke, uh, you know, where Matt Dillon was a celibate man who protected a woman called Kitty who owned yes. the, the local saloon, but there was none of that stuff going on. But now you have to be, you can't, you, you know, you, you have to be situationally aware in that area too and always um, be ready to turn the channel or, or like you said, you do, you, you pre-screen them. That, you know, some, you know, when, when, a, when a person is young and they're, they're obviously exhibiting great athletic skill, you don't take them to the weight room and have them lift weights. You, you teach them in their athletic skills and in the fundamentals, but their bones and their musculature, it's not ready to become. It's really weird when you see a Kyle, a kid, I've seen a few of them, where their dad is having to lift weights and they're kind of ripped, but it just looks kind of strange. It's because it is. Kids are not designed for resistance training yet. Mm-hmm. You need to develop in them basic skill sets, basic fundamentals. And so when a child is young, they're not ready to be to be overrun by their culture. They're not, they haven't gone through enough resistance training yet. And so there's a time when, the, when you protect them from the culture. Then you can develop in them resistance training so that when they go out into society, and they do need to, there needs to be that time in their lives when you bring them out and let them experience society. But it doesn't need, it, you know, 12 or 13 may be about that point where there's a changeover yes. that takes place. But you've got to protect them. It's not time yet for them to develop muscles. It's time for them to develop skill sets and fundamentals. Exactly. No, and now it's now it's about more. We'll we'll play things that are kind of a little bit more on the edge, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then, but then it's pause the show. What do you think? What would you do in this situation? How would you handle it? Is this right or wrong? What this person is doing? A lot of and the then computer- we can have a talk about the morals. Right, and that's called. That's not resistance training. You're still developing their skill set and their fundamentals. Yes. Yes. And then, but about the age where your children are, about the confirmation age, it's time for them to go to the gym. It's a, it's yes. time. It's time for them to stand up for the faith that you've taught them, and to resist the devil. It's time for them to get physically strong, not just uh, mentally and spiritually nimble and knowledgeable. They need to be able to re- begin to resist. You know, at the confirmation age, when I was a kid, the bishop used to slap you in the face when you were confirmed. <laughs> and it, it was it was the tradition That's- to say, "Get ready to defend the faith." That's amazing. That's, I had not heard of that before, but that's a, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, we're talking with Mike Roth. He is the, the founder of the Order of Lepanto. It's a martial arts uh, training uh, organization uh, in, there, in, there in Texas. And uh, through learning the ancient martial arts skills based on the ancient texts of the warriors, the crusaders, they, they de- they're developing men's uh, 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 not only physical warriorship, but their spiritual uh, warriorship at all a- as well. Mike, where can people find you? So you can find us on the Internet at orderoflepanto.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, but always as Order of Lepanto. Orderoflepanto.com. And we also want to invite you, you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and go to, uh, go to our, our newest site. It's called Bear School of Manliness. Dot com. It's like the Holy Spirit just put this new site in order for us. We love it. It's it's a cow, ba, ba, it's interesting. It's a cowboy themed 
uh, website based on developing men's uh, on a three-year cycle, developing you in the different areas of manliness, the 36 different areas that we've developed. And it also not only gives you uh, great videos and, and, and written lessons and inspirations, and, and, uh, but it also gives you a toolbox and, and how to set goals and, and change your trajectory. Plus, we have like the Cave of Adullam experience uh, where the men have a – it's like a Facebook group, only it's, it's private. It's on our website where men can share, challenge, encourage, inspire each other, and pray for each other. So go to schoolofmanliness.com too. Bear School of Manliness and check it out. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Mike Roth. He's the founder of the Order of Lepanto. And where can they find you again, Mike, on the website? Yeah, orderoflepanto.com. And that's spelled L-E-P-A-N-T-O, orderoflepanto.com. L-E-P-A-N, yes, sir. How, what, what, is the, what is the basic skill set of, a, of, a, of sword fighting? Uh, it's a, obviously, it is, it is its own set of skills. Um, it's a weapons-based martial art. They uh, work in the swords. They work, we work in knives. We work in unarmed. Uh, but you learn the sword first. And unlike a karate, which is kind of an unarmed art that you add weapons to, uh, European martial arts was a a West sword-based martial art that you deleted the sword and changed the weapon out to either a knife or hand-to-hand or a quarterstaff, uh, for instance. Yeah, and I used to like uh, I used to work with staff uh, with a longbow too, staff at uh, staff. Yes. But you know, like in a scream of fighting and sword fighting, we used to have what we call the nine directional strikes and things like that. But I know when we would when we would go through a season of training with uh, with knives, a scream of sticks, or swords, yes. those things move really fast. Yes, and they do. Once you're do- when you say, okay, now we're going to go back to hand to hand. It's like your opponent's uh, weapons, his arms and legs, uh, are moving in slow motion. Yes, because <laughs> swords move surprising. fast. They move fast, right? Because there's that there's that 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 slicing, you know, acceleration of the sword. What yeah, does that so teach? Part of the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so part of that skill set that we teach is how do I move fast up until about the last three to four inches. And then how do I slow it down so that what I get is a controlled strike? Uh, you know, we there are some occasional bruises in doing this, but mm-hmm. the, we've not had any serious injuries in five years uh, uh, doing sword fighting. So well, it it's is, wooden uh, swords. It, we have to make sure people know that it's training swords. Yes. but they're they're, a, they're long a, swords. They're the the, the regular yes, they're length of the knights. They're forty eight inches long. They're you know I mean this is a fairly good size and it's solid hickory. Yeah, so good. This uh, thing is. It'll do. It'll hurt. <laughs> it'll, <laughs> I love the sword. It's a, it, it, the sword is always in the in the shape of a cross. It's just so cool. But then, what do you learn about that? For example, um, in, in 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 any sort of fighting, but but with 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 knives and swords, it would be so easy to make a strike where you you throw your own self off balance, where you've stra- you've gone you've gone past you know the point of being able to hold your balance. If you yeah. do that, you got to be committed to following through. And getting ready for another, you know, to reverse or whatever you need to do. But if you normally, when you strike, you want to strike just you want to know how what the length of your 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 reach is, so that you don't off balance yourself with your opponent. Uh, I think. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you apply that though to us for our regular spiritual or or regular life? Keeping balance. Well, sure. Balance. I mean, I, I think everybody has probably experienced getting off balance going into Lent. I mean, how many times do you come up in, at, at you know? You're coming on Lent. You're like, okay, what am I going to do this year? How am I going to grow this year? And you come up with a list of 17 things that you are going to do. 
And then you get, you know, one week into Lent and 16 of them have gone out the window, right? Because you've overreached. You've pulled that, you pulled your strike so far out that you're tripping over yourself and falling down. You've lost your balance. Uh, it's better to pick two, three things that are, that are growing, that are pushing you, but that are not overextending you. It would be similar to walking into the gym the first day and saying, okay, put, you know, 300 pounds on there. I'm going to go bench it. Right? We've you seen can't that. Do that. <laughs> and sometimes People get really hurt doing that. Uh, uh, dude, I remember one time going to one with this really strong guy when I was just out of college. You go to the gym, let's go work out. Now that I can, you know, I'm an athlete, I can do this. And I and I started lifting what he was lifting, and the next day I couldn't move my arms or legs. I was I was spent. <laughs> but you know, Aristotle had this great thing. Uh, one of the virtues that he espoused was moderation. You know, yes. all things through moderation, and sometimes you even have to be moderate in your moderation. Sometimes it isn't time to be moderate. You know, sometimes it's time to feast or to fast, but to understand keeping your balance in your life. And I think a lot of men, particularly, they'll wield that weapon of their career, and that'll become their yes. focus. Or they'll wield that weapon of, of money or honor, uh, and, they, and, and, and that, that'll become their focus, and they lose the, the balance in their lives. And they and they look at their families. Oh, I got to go. I can't coach soccer this year because I'm working on this special project where I'm trying to get ahead. And then they find a few years go by, and all of a sudden their their children are are in jeopardy. They 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 fall into the culture. So uh, a man needs to really learn in his life how to how to strike a balance. Can you speak to that? Well, yes, exactly. And I think martial arts is a lot about that. Uh, all martial arts are about understanding your body's position in space and time and what's around you and how do you move. And one of the things we practice is we practice on dirt and grass yeah. so that there's hills and rocks and, and other things to get in your way because that's what life is about. You know, you think you have this great plan and then something gets in the way. You know, your car breaks down uh, unbeknownst to you, right? Something goes, goes wrong or, or your kid has a problem in school or any one of a number of things can go wrong in your life. And, and what was smooth just a minute ago is now all messed up. Um, and having that balance, though, keeps you from stumbling too far. It allows you to recover your footing or in this case, it allows you to recover your your life and, and to hold on to it and keep keep the important stuff going uh, while you deal with anything that has come up. Yeah, I know uh, in my ninja training, we did a lot of our training at night. Our tests, a lot a lot of a test was at night in the mountains on back trails. And I remember when I was training my sons in the martial arts, too, I'd take them up on a mountain at night, and that would, they would train on these rocks. And so the thing is, is we have to also be not just vigilant in terms of knowing how to fight in different terrain, but at night. When the, when yes. the darkness seems to befall us, when, when the enemy is coming against us, that isn't the time to turn and run. But if you haven't mm -hmm. developed... The instinct to fight. If you haven't, if you don't know your catechism, if you don't know how to how to pray, if you don't if you don't have the sacraments in your life, you don't have the rosary in your life. Uh, when the night falls, you could be in in jeopardy. You know? Do you know that when? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. I was just going to say that that makes a, it's a very good point. Like you have to train before you get to that spot. You can't right. train in the darkness for for your first time. Just you can't. You don't want to be preparing to learn how to pray in the midst of a spiritual crisis. It, you can do it, and you can get through it, but just way harder to get there. Right. So, 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 part of being a man is 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 preparing yourself spiritually. I know every year, I used to. I don't do it so much anymore, but I used to tr choose a new physical challenge. One time, it was I'm going to get my next degree in my belt in my martial art. Or I'm going to pedal my bicycle across the United States or paddle the Molokai Channel on my surfboard, but there was always some uh, physical goal that I set. Why? Because I knew that I could learn to train myself in the virtue of fortitude from the outside in. Anybody that accomplishes a great physical feat, they will always tell you it wasn't a physical effort. It was all in the act of the will. It was all mental. It was all internal. And in that process, you can actually build fortitude. You can actually build courage. You can see that you can press. You can go outside your limits. Pe people have limits, but we should continually push those boundaries outward. We should grow in strength and wisdom and knowledge and understanding to make a bigger and bigger and bigger place. I love what G.K. Chesterton said 
uh, the orthodoxy of the Catholic Church is there. The walls of the orthodoxy are there so that good things can run wild. We want to have those walls, but we want to build, push them outward so that we can breathe bigger and bigger and, and also have a place where people can come for refuge within the confines of our own lives. Yes. That's great stuff. That is great stuff. <laughs> you and I are like-minded, I think, in a lot of ways. Hey, you got yeah. one minute to tell the men out there whatever other message you feel the Holy Spirit's asking you to say. You know, if you feel called or touched by this, then please come check us out. Um, you know, this is a personal apostolate in that we rely on leaders in local areas. Uh, you cannot learn to sword fight or do any martial arts over the Internet. I mean, you can see it, but you can't really practice it and understand it and know it until you do it in person with real practice partners and, and real friends. Um, it's not as hard to get started as it might seem. You know, uh, these study groups can be started with very little uh, effort, and there's not a lot of monetary uh, requirements either. We keep everything as low as possible as for a barrier to entry to this uh, because we want men to be involved in this around the world. And so, Mike, it's the martial art of the Crusaders type fighting, and, the, yes. and your group is called the Order of Lepanto. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find us on, at orderoflepanto.com or we're on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. So Everything else. Mike Roth, our out. guest, the founder of Order of Lepanto. And we're going to invite everybody there to go to uh, bearschoolofmanliness.com. There's a, just tremendous things there. One of the things I forgot to mention is that all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show, are there. And you get to see sometimes six or seven, eight, nine episodes there that have not even aired on EWTN yet. So uh, go and join the Bear School of Manliness. And in that, in so doing, you can help support our ministry, which we really, really, really need. Um, but we always trust in the Lord. You know, in Hawaii, Mike, um, the word ha means breath. And Jesus said to his disciples, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, and he breathed his Holy Spirit. So this is how we end our show. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.